Alright, I want to show you how screwed up people are. It's unbelievable, really. About the end times, the Antichrist, the Lake of Fire, Gog and Magog. It is the whole video amazingly is accurate. So, so let's see how accurate this video is. Neuro Charles. Neurologists are stunned. They've confirmed that ear ringing is shrinking your brain cells. Jesus. That's good. Oh my goodness. That's shrinking my brain cells. Okay. So this is Charles Lawson. So I'm going to play a couple of sound bites here. All right. A fire and brimstone. Imagine that you are a dweller on this earth, and that's what they're called in the tribulation, earth dwellers. And you are a dweller on this earth. And we've come down to the end of the tribulation period. And the second advent has taken place. And this creature has been consumed before your very eyes. And now you are about ready to lay your eyes upon the judge of the earth. And he takes the Antichrist and cast him into the lake of fire. And you are about ready to go into the millennium. You talk about it. Right, so yeah, that's one part. And just keep that in mind what he's saying here. From the foundation of the world, they're about to enter into the millennial kingdom right here on this earth. For a thousand glorious years, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign from Jerusalem. A thousand years of righteousness like this world has never known. A, th a thousand years like this world has never known. Now listen. For a thousand glorious years, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign from Jerusalem. He's going to reign from Jerusalem. So where is Jerusalem? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've showed this before. Um, let me see. Uh, you know what? I can't remember now. Let's see. Oh, I might have to do it a different way. huh? Let's do it this way. I apologize for this here. Right here. That's and there's numerous verses, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So Jesus is going to reign from Jerusalem. Now is that on earth or is that Jerusalem, which is above? Very clearly, uh, this is when Jesus returns. He's reigning from New Jerusalem, not not that Jerusalem over there in the Middle East. I mean, come on, man. And so we read here in Revelation 21, even in Revelation 3, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. So when Jesus comes back and he's reigning from Jerusalem, he's reigning from Jerusalem, which is above. All right, so any of the passages we read in the Old Testament regarding Jesus reigning from Jerusalem, Jerusalem is above. All right, it's the city of God which is coming down from heaven. So, um, you know, this expert here, he's getting it wrong, man. He's getting it wrong. And then not only that, he's saying that there's going to be a thousand years of peace like the world has never seen. You know, is that what he said? Into the world. They're about to enter into the millennial kingdom right here on this earth. For a thousand glorious years, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign from Jerusalem. A thousand years of righteousness like this world has never known. Nope. Like this world has never known. Nope. That's wrong. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. All right, so we're going to go here. I, I feel like, I, you know, people just don't read the Bible, I guess. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And so, the end of the world? 
there's not a thousand years of peace before the end of the world and the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's it that's the end of the world from Jerusalem a thousand years of righteousness like this world has never known well okay I guess you could wiggle around that and say well this world is n never gonna know it okay that's fine but the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and when he comes in the clouds of heaven we are gathered together and lifted up in the air right and this is crystal clear all throughout the Bible first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this is at the end of the world all right so think about this here let's go one step further here hallelujah in the millennium but at the end of that thousand year period of time men as they are will rebel against God because Satan will be loose what so there's gonna be a thousand years of peace like the world has never known and then what period of time men as they are will rebel against God because Satan will be loosed out of his prison he'll go up upon the surface of the earth he'll come up and he'll deceive the nations okay think about this this is a I mean this doesn't make any sense at all so let's go to Matthew 13 all right, so I listen to parts of this and he also points out Matthew 25 so first of all we'll go to Matthew 13 here and uh, the parable of the wheat and the tares all right the harvest is the end of the world and come harvest is when the wheat is separated from the tares the tares are gathered and burned the wheat is gathered and um, put in the barn right it's somewhere where's that word at there it is but gather the wheat into my barn all right so then let's go to Matthew 25 see at the end of the world I mean that's it it's the end of the world and all the unsaved are done away with all right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are gathered together now you can't get around that and then when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world you can't get around that and then when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all the unsaved are destroyed all right uh, you can't get around any of that now here in Matthew 25 let me see if I can find what he was talking about I gotta remember it first all right so he gives the parable oh, right there all right then before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and separate the sheep from the goats <laughs> I mean how many times does the same thing have to be said it's set, it, using different words different ways to understand it but it's all saying the same exact thing when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world and that's when the saved are separated from the unsaved and the unsaved are destroyed forever now Chuck Charles Lawson is saying that there's Jesus is gonna be here on earth so I mean it's very clear Hold on a second now. It's very clear when Jesus comes that we are gathered together 
and we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible right where am I at here right at the this is at the twinkling of an eye at the last trump the last trump is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24 you can't get around it Matthew 24 last trump trump of God the end of the world right you cannot get around this right here right with the great sound of a trumpet right there it is great sound of a trumpet and you got the last trump the trumpet shall sound it's the end of the world and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed right for this corruptible must put on incorruption okay so in Charles Lawson's theory is that Jesus comes we are changed into our incorruptible bodies all right and so for whatever reason that's not explained there's a thousand years of absolute peace okay I don't know why it's only a thousand years I was hoping for eternal life <laughs> but Charles Lawson says it's only a thousand years okay so think about this so Jesus comes and there's the separation the saved from the unsaved the unsaved are destroyed forever so all that remains are the saved people and it's a thousand years of absolute peace no sin whatsoever for a thousand years until at the end of the thousand years and men as they are will rebel against God because Satan will be loosed out of his prison and as hallelujah in the millennium but at the end of that thousand year period of time men as they are will rebel against God wow so saved men changed into their glorified bodies are going to rebel against God? Do you think God's teaching that? God, because Satan will be loosed out of his prison. He'll go up upon the surface of the earth. He'll come up and he'll deceive the nations again, Gog and Magog. And they'll come out to a great battle that time. God will wipe them from this earth and wipe them into their... It doesn't make any sense at all. So, Jesus comes back. It's not the end of the world. And there are, I mean, obviously there are people that, people are changed into their glorified bodies. And death is done away with forever. Man, this does, I can't even begin to make any sense of this. Alright, so according to Charles Lawson, after we are transformed into our glorified bodies, there's a thousand years and then Satan is loosed and the only people around are those of us that are saved what's the point of this and, uh, and then what happens he gathers together the nations no, there's only one nation it's the, the people of God that's it and so what everybody's gonna join up with Satan and God's gonna destroy us all it's not making any sense at all so let me make this simple all right first of all the key to understanding Revelation 20 is very simple this is a vision that is given to John by an angel just like what we read in Revelation 1 that explains the whole book of Revelation an angel gives this vision to John it's not a continuation from 19 from from uh, chapter 19 this is a new vision all by itself and I saw an angel come down from heaven all right so he's giving a description of a new vision all right now the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, and Satan was bound for a thousand years. Right now, 
dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan is bound right now. Why is that? Well, if you understand the Bible, you understand uh, the covenant, the promises given to Abraham and his seed. You understand that um, the people of God are the twelve children of Israel, all right, and they became nations. All right, they are the children of God, and they were of one uh, people. Now Jesus comes. Okay, so Jesus, Jesus comes and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes. All right, when he does that then Satan is bound okay so no longer is the people of God in one country if you will and all the countries around are deceived by Satan now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes so now there's not just the one country of people you understand now the kingdom of God belongs to whosoever believes and Jesus says I the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof and uh oh oh what how do I do that I always do that for some reason so here in 1 Peter 2, we read, Which in time past were not a people, but now, but are now the people of God. Right? We, Christians, are the holy people of God. We are the chosen people of God. We are the nation of God. We are the children of God. We are the children of Israel. You go back to Exodus 19, for example. Uh, they were a kingdom of priests and holy nation these words which that shalt thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel and you see here in first Peter 2 your chosen generation of royal priesthood a kingdom of priests right and holy nation right and holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel which in time past were not a people, but are now, are now the people of God. All right, so you had it with, essentially within one country, all the people of God. Now the people of God is all throughout the world. That's when the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan is bound for a thousand years. You can't get around that. There's nobody that can explain it any differently because there's no other way to explain it. All right. Now, one key here to understand that also is when he is loosed, he goes out to deceive the nations, which are all around the world. Now, when this happens, <laughs> where are we? We're up in the air with the Lord. Now, there's no way around this. Right, because when Satan is loosed and he gathers all the people, just like in the Old Testament, outside of the country of God, Satan was deceiving all those nations. Now that luxury of his, if you will, has been taken away. But at the end of the world, when we are lifted up, now Satan is loosed and he can once again deceive the nations because we're up in the air we're separated so now Satan gathers together his people which are the unsaved right and then they compass the camp of the Saints about right so like in the Old Testament um, there was the country of God and then all around compassed all around the country of God were countries of Satan nations that were deceived by Satan now it's gonna happen again the difference is we are up in the air with the Lord get it now we are all gathered together once again just like 
uh, many prophecies in the Old Testament that the children of God will be, you know, gathered together. <laughs> it, this is all so simple. Okay, so we're up in the air, and uh, the, our enemies are gathered against us, compass the camp of the saints about, but they are at our feet because we are up in the air. Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thou, thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Alright, that's God talking to the serpent. Alright, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Think about that. That's Jesus up in the air, and he's stomping his foot on the head of the serpent. Psalm 110. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Alright, thy footstool. So, again, God stomping his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all wickedness forever. Alright, in Revelation 3, verse 9. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Alright, so the, our enemies are going to come to our feet. God is going to make them to know that he has loved us because we believe in him. And they don't. So they are gathered at our feet. They are compassed about but we are up in the air and fire comes down from God and devours them all all right destroying wickedness forever all right so this is at the end of the thousand years why is it a thousand years well this is a very unique time period because before Jesus came along there was just one country of people and God was only watching over that one country of people. Now, the everything's changed, right? Now, it's whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. So now God is watching over all his people all throughout the world. All right, I mean, it's, it's really kind of simple. All right, what's not simple is this idea that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and it's not the end of the world. And what's not simple is this idea that there's going to be a thousand years of peace and then Satan's going to come back. That's not simple. It's confusion. And it's stupid. No, because there's no point in it. And if you're going to teach this stuff, now I want to hear you talk more about this idea of glorified people living amongst unsaved people, people having sex people having dirty sex, people having uh, babies and you know Sodom and Gomorrah and all that sort of stuff. Talk about all that. How people that are glorified living among people that are having sex and dying. I mean what's changed? What's the point? That's not supported by scripture anywhere at all. It's ridiculousness, it's perversion, it's confusion and it's not in the Bible. All right, this stuff, this stuff is so simple. When it says here in verse 11, I saw a great white throne that's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. All right, we'll go to Revelation 1, we'll wrap this up. Revelation 1, it says, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Okay? That's not a lie. That's the truth. Matthew 24. The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear Jesus in heaven. And everybody's going to mourn. Everybody's going to freak out. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. And angels shall gather together his elect. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Alright, now let's back it up. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Right now, right now we are kings and priests 
of God right now. Right now we are a royal priesthood right now. Right now we are a priest of God and of Christ right now. And again, it's the same thing that we read in Exodus 19. A kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. We are the people of God right now. And <laughs> wow, you know, this is this is the end of the world right here. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Therefore, this thousand years that we're living in right now, it's a very unique time period. But it's coming to an end at the end of the world. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. And then, of course, when, when that happens, uh, a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, behold, I make all things new. Come on, man, it's simple. <laughs>